Evening, everybody. It's a few minutes after six, and this is your closing comment for Wednesday. <clears throat> Excuse me, and a very interesting day it was. Okay, um, so we had all those earnings, and some of them were misses, but the story of the day was recovery. Um, we had Boeing, which was uh, down on the day, about $4, closed up $0.70. Cents. Microsoft, which traded as low as 230 today, uh, this morning when we talked it was uh, 235 got all the way down to 230 then came roaring back to 243 and the close on it was 240.55 up 11 cents so not overwhelming but quite a recovery i mean ten dollars off the low uh, texas instruments same situation it was down to 171 and a half closed 175.04 uh, kimberly clark down to 129 closed down 30 cents at 132.10 um not so great were norfolk and southern which was a huge miss and in fact drove the transports to be the only major loser uh down 160 or 1.1 percent when none of the other indexes were up or down more than a quarter of a percent um we also had capital one traded down to 103 which was down about three or four came back and closed 116.09 up 958 or nine percent after the close we had ibm which uh, had closed down 73 cents at 140 and three quarters um, rallied up to 144.60, so a nice little move, and then collapsed back to 137.50, uh, down $4.09. And Tesla <laughs> was, without any question, everybody was waiting for it to move 20 or 30 points. In point of fact, it closed the day at 144.43, up 45 cents then traded up to 150 then traded back down but finished right now 146 23 up 222 on the day so kind of interesting uh the chart on the screen is uh the silver and i am using this chart that you can't really see everything on just to show you the chart trend this is a three-year daily so we've come down and we've been fighting with this uh, downtrend line and it looks roughly the same on the weekly a little more well defined but uh, the reason that I'm showing you this one is because we're long uh, we got long right in here versus around uh, 23 um, 23.2305. Give you a little better look. Let's go to the daily. And uh, after getting into this, down here, seeing it reverse and close, you know, down on the day, but halfway up the range. Then yesterday, down in the morning, up in the afternoon, closing uh, up 20 cents. Today, down. 40 cents in the morning to close up again 20 cents if we come through here um you know 24 and a half 25 will be great we're in the um agq which is the leveraged silver etf and we're in the options and the options uh cost us a dollar 45 to a dollar 50 and they closed 215 bid offered at 230 uh, and they closed right on the high at 215 up another 30 cents so pretty nice um, the rest of the futures uh, gold was up 720 oil was up a little was down a little um, finished up literally two cents um, bitcoin down a hundred and a quarter it was down 400 early uh, the market, by the way, was down pretty damn hard um, and came back here. It was uh, 
on the NYSE, it was four to one down stocks this morning, finished 1.2 to one up today, three to one down on the NASDAQ, um, finished 1.2 to one up also, and volume was pretty much in line at 5.4 billion shares traded. Um, and uh, Susie Orman, not my all-time favorite, was just on CNBC. And uh, she used a fairly dramatic uh, statistic. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned this before. Everybody keeps talking about what great shape the consumer is in. Um, she quotes... 74% of the population lives paycheck to paycheck. Autos are being repossessed in huge numbers. She says biggest numbers ever. Uh, I'm not familiar with it, so I'm not going to argue with it. But more specifically, 67% of consumers cannot meet a $400 emergency. So... Clearly, that does not square whatsoever with all of the crap that we're hearing about uh, what great shape the consumer is in. So take that as a warning as we melt up and, you know, continue to move higher. Um, from my perspective, this market could melt up even more. Um, if you recall, in the fourth quarter of uh, 21... Um, I was very vocal about the fact that even though we were making new highs in the S&P and the Dow, that the market was very top heavy and it was like they flipped the switch the first day in January and everybody knows what kind of a decline we had. Um, and there was more money floating around at that time because people were just beginning to get back and had all of those stimulus checks and unemployment extended and et cetera. And last but not least, um, as a native New Yorker who commuted from Long Island to Manhattan on the Long Island Railroad, today was the first day that the Long Island Railroad went into Grand Central Station. If you're not familiar, Grand Central Station is on 42nd Street and on the east side. Penn Station, where the railroad ran, is on 34th Street and on the west side. So if you were coming from Long Island and you wanted to go to Midtown on the east side, you would have to take the train into the city then you'd have to take a shuttle from Penn Station to Grand Central Station. It was an additional half hour, let's say, of your commute. So uh, today was the first day. Okay, uh, one last mention. Uh, tomorrow, 8.30, first look at Q4 GDP. Uh, consensus is about 2.6% versus 3.2. Advanced Q4 chain deflator. Um, also, consensus 3.2 prior 4.4. Durable goods orders, durable X transportation, initial claims, continuing claims, December advanced goods trade deficit, and December. Uh, advance retail inventories and wholesale inventories. That's all at 8.30. 10 o'clock new home sales, 10.30 net gas inventories. Also Valero, Comcast, Archer Daniels, American Airlines, Dow, Northrop Grumman, Southwest Air, MasterCard, and Blackstone all report before the open tomorrow. So there we go, folks. I have uh, you had a good day. I know that we did between uh, Starbuck and the silver. Uh, we're 